Okay, so I needed a solution to mount um, all my lights and uh, all my different accessories. And one day a compressor and things like that onto the Discovery. So um, watched a couple videos on YouTube and uh, looked up a couple reviews. Um, this is the Oxbeam 8 gang switch box. We'll do a little bit of an unboxing. I'll just show you what's inside. And then uh, we'll talk about how mine's gonna be a little bit different. So uh, when you open the box, you get stickers um, right here. We'll set everything off to the side. You get um, somewhat of an instru instruction manual. Basically just kind of shows you the contents of what's in it. And it sort of gives you the, uh, the wiring of everything. This is the most important part, the part I care about the most, is this is actually gonna go in uh, the way I'm gonna wire it up. It's gonna go underneath the uh, engine bay. Okay, so I had to pause for a second for that. Uh, but this is the important part. Um, this goes underneath your engine bay, hooks up your power and your ground, and it also hooks up every circuit that you need. So if you wanna wire lights, if you wanna wire whatever, and all the amp ratings are right here in these fuses. Um, so Oxbeam is adamant that you don't go over 60 amps with this entire setup. Um, one thing that I don't understand though is why you can't move these. So, um, in mine scenario, for instance, here's going to be your switch panel. Uh, each one of these buttons correspond with different circuits here. So for instance, this is circuit number one. This is circuit one. Um, I don't see the point because I believe these are all the same amperage relays underneath here. I don't see why you can't move these fuses into different spots to make them correspond with the placement of the buttons that you want to go. So we're going to try it out and see if that works. They give you extra fuses as well. I'm also going to probably change some of these fuses that, um, like some lights I have, probably are not going to need uh, 10 amps even. Um, some of them could run on five, so I might even... Replace a couple of these tens with fives, run all the lights, the smallest amount of fuse power that I could do. Um, what else is in the kit? This is a solution I have. Um, this is just double sided tape. I might use that to mount the switchboard. Inline circuit breaker that goes through the power wire. Um, this is Looks pretty decent. I do like that it has a waterproof case on there. Um, you got some brackets. This one is a swivel bracket, it looks like, that you could mount on to any surface and swivel it up and down. Uh, you have an Adafuse. Um, we'll go over what I do about this later. I'm gonna have a little bit different scenario though than most people. If you're running it off your start battery, this Adafuse is necessary because you don't want this to be able to stay on all the time uh, because then it would drain your start battery. Mine's going to run off of my secondary house battery. So I'm probably not even going to, I'm going to try to wire it without this. That way I'm able to turn lights on or use whatever accessories with the truck not running. So that's my goal. But it comes with an Adafuse, which is really nice. Comes with hardware. comes with, this is the port, I believe, for the Adafuse, right here. Um, one reason I went with the Oxbeam version, so you can buy a, even a knockoff of this version. Um, this one has an automatic dimmer on it. So that's going to be one issue I might have that I might have to use that Adafuse because I think that it's going to have power to this controller all the time. Um, but this is for this Adafuse right here, so we'll put those together. Um, let's see. Underneath here, looks like you need to lift this up. Oh, and there's something else in here too. We have... This is the main cord for the controller. This goes from the controller to this unit here. Uh, we also have, looks like 
maybe six gauge to go for your power and your ground. Uh, comes with zip ties. Looks like there's another mounting bracket right here. And this will go on the back of here and just be like a flush mount if you need that. And a couple different mounting options for underneath the hood for this controller here. There's one there, and it looks like a flush mount here as well. Um, I'm going to try. The problem with the Discovery 1s, uh, there's not a lot of extra room underneath there. So I'm going to try to mount this somewhere um, using this angle bracket here. I think that would be the cleanest option. It looks like you could use it upside down or however. But I might be able to even do it against the fender this way. So we'll see what we come up with. Um, I'm not going to show you as far as the wiring goes step by step because I'm not a professional electrician. Um, I'm good at uh, dealing with automotive uh, electrical work, but uh, I'll show you the finished product and I'll show you how everything works with my setup being a dual battery. Um, I use a dual battery system from uh, Keylon is my battery isolator. So I'll show you how all that works together. You're soon. 60 amp breaker. There is nowhere on this truck, unless I wanted to fashion it somehow with like a zip tie, which um, as you can see, I'm more into clean wiring than that. Um, there's nowhere to put that. So what I did is on Amazon, um, I'll show you what I ordered, is a 60 amp inline fuse that will pop if we go over 60 amps. Um, if I find that popping a lot, I will try to find a way to use this, that way I can just do a reset on it if I need to. Um, but I don't plan on running close to 60 amps through this, so I think we'll be fine. But I'll show you that when we're all done. Okay, I think I have a mounting solution for this truck. You can see um, with everything in here, here's my start battery, here's my house battery. So I wanted it closer to the house battery than the start battery. Um, I really wanna run all my accessories on this side, um, but I also wanna keep it away as much as I can from the fender um, as far as lower here because if I ever decide to run a snorkel which right now there's no plans for but I want to leave that spot somewhat open um, what I've come up with and these uh, this is a tube for my breathers and this is or my differential breathers and this is um, a 10 gauge wire that runs all the way to the back for power and it goes straight to the house battery um what i've decided to do is this so far um with this bracket in here and these eventually out of the way it looks like there will be plenty of room here it's not close you can hardly tell your light it's not real close to the uh brake master cylinder there and get everything away um i can hide everything and honestly when I go to run wire it'll be super easy um, because there's a big plug underneath that to run wire to so the wire will literally go in the cabin and then straight up to that uh, you won't see any other wire through here it'll just be that right there um, I like that idea the best I think that makes it look the cleanest um, and it matches all of the factory Land Rover lines going this way. If you've noticed, Land Rovers always have lines going vertically. So, okay, we'll see how that works out. All right, so super easy install. Um, I really like this uh, box beam system. I think it's gonna work out really good. A um, couple things I'm going to change. Uh, this I just put in line right here close to the battery um, for now. I'm going to get an inline fuse though to clean it up and then I can hide it along with these other uh, inline fuses that I have. Um, it looks like it's a lot of wire and it is uh, for this truck because uh, to get everything set up with the dual battery system, it was a little interesting. Um, the only thing I, that I would change in the future is I don't like how the uh, switch panel has to be powered on by the key um, 
I wish that you could just have a simple on off button to turn that on and off. That way I could have tied it into a constant instead of having to tie it into a switchable uh, fuse. Um, but other than that, it was super easy. Uh, this is my power wire. Everything that gets run off th this house battery. Again, this won't be here, so it'll be a little bit cleaner. Um, the aux beam systems fit really good in this corner on the Discovery. You just had to drill a couple holes in the side there, level it out, and we are good to go. It's not even close to my master cylinder. And then in the truck, that was another thing was figuring out a good spot for it. All I did was take the trim off of the A-pillar here, run it down the side. You can barely see it right here poking out. And then it's at the footwell. Um, a lot of the stuff can be hidden under here. That's where I also put my add a fuse was inside. That way I could keep it all on this side. So now with this truck dual battery system, I have the start battery here. Okay, and this only starts the truck. And basically, if um, I were to disconnect that isolator right there, it would be a stock truck again. All of my accessories and everything run off of now this aux beam system. And then I also do have one hardwired. Um, this 10 gauge right here runs all the way to the back and it's fused and on a relay itself as well. And it runs to this um, and that is on my uh, house battery as well this is on a constant draw of power that way if I'm camping or something like that um, or if I in the future when I get a fridge I can power the fridge constantly uh, without the truck on and it not draining my start battery so that's the reason to have both of these um, in the future here soon, I'm gonna have lights up there. The amber lights should be coming in soon for here. Um, haven't decided if I'm gonna put some on the hood. I wanna keep this truck mostly period correct. Uh, by the way, with the that switch unit, you can see it from the windshield. I decided to go there just because I didn't wanna drill anything into the dash in case I didn't end up liking the system. Um, but I think it was a pretty easy install and it's pretty clean which is what I like. Uh, now I'm officially out of room though under here. So when I go to run my compressor here in a couple months, I'm gonna have to run it probably from the back. Um, so look forward to a video on a cabinet build probably because I don't want it just wide open. So thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Um, and uh, hopefully we can do more reviews on, especially Oxbeam stuff, because it seems like they have pretty decent stuff. Um, and this being my, not my daily driver, I, uh, I don't really care to put the nicest things in it. So as long as they work, but thank you.